You want something to eat? Yeah, something that's on a clean bowl, yeah. Yeah, well, I can order something. I know you don't want to eat in my You have enough money for that? The disrespect. Some of y'all missed the drama. Well, it's back. But this is completely unacceptable. Bilal tests Shida to see if she just wants him for his money by picking her up from the airport in a van that's not his and taking her to his modest childhood home. Just to see that if I did live here, will you still be with me? I know, kind of petty, but at the same time, it was a smart move because unfortunately, Shida shows her true character. Is there any rocks in the kitchen? A lot of what she said was actually more hurtful in relation to like, I thought that like you would have been better than what you are right now. Well, he got the answer he was looking for. Let's talk about it. Hey, 90 Day fans fam, it's Malicia. I know we are still getting acclimated to this new cast. I saw some mixed reviews about Kobe and Emily on last week's recap. And this week, I'm so interested in hearing your thoughts on Bilal and Shida. Aside from you giving your take on them as a couple, their storyline made me think of a question. I wanna know, if you had to choose between true love that lasts or financial wealth that lasts, what would your choice be? You can only pick one. Let me know in the comments. And men, really think about this. Don't just go with financial wealth because of societal pressures. My name is Bilal, I'm 42 years old, and I live in Kansas City, Missouri. All right, let's get into Bilal and Shida. Quick background info. Bilal works in real estate, he's pretty well off financially, he has a nice home, and he drives a Mercedes Benz. But he comes from humble beginnings. I do appreciate nice things. Nice suits, love watches. However, at the end of the day, you know, I didn't grow up in the suburbs, I grew up in the hood. That really makes me who I am. Something else that makes Bilal who he is, is his Muslim faith. This is really the center of who I am. It's the root of what makes Bilal Bilal. Bilal has been divorced from his ex-wife, who he is still close with, for seven years, and they share two children together. Now let's get into his fiance, Shida. She's 37 years old. She's a yoga instructor. And she's from Trinidad and Tobago. These two met the good old 90 day fashion way, online. Bilal said they had some mutual friends on social media and she slid into his DMs. Now I am here for a woman shooting her shot, but after his ex-wife said this. How do you guys meet? Really just through social media. Brother, I know you be on Facebook flexing and all that other I stuff. I really don't. Yeah, you really Not do. So much. And how we're about to see Shida behave, I'm wondering what is it about Bilal that truly made her interested? And we were talking and things were vibing well. And then I was like, I have to see you. I have to see you in person. And that's when I made plans to, to visit her. After talking to Shida for a while over the phone, Bilal went to meet her in person for the first time in Trinidad. And after spending only seven days physically together, he proposed. <laughs> it's 90 day, people. It's 90 day. And get this, due to COVID and the visa process, it's been almost two years since they've seen each other. Now they're about to live together and get married. Sounds a little weird. <laughs> mm-hmm, it is. Anyway, because Bilal has trust issues from his past, he comes up with this master plan to pick Shida up from the airport in a van that's not his. She told me she's a ride or die. So let's put that to the test. And take her to his childhood home in the hood to see if she really loves him for who he is or what he has. An important note here, throughout the entire time they've been talking, Bilal has never shown her where he lives or the car he drives. All she's seen is a blank white wall when they video chat, which if I were in her shoes, that would concern me for sure. But I'm guessing she still decided to come to America without seeing where she's going to live because she figured Bilal has money, based off his Facebook. I know you be on Facebook flexing and all that. And a few other things, which we'll get into shortly. But first, here's a look at that reunion at the airport. Is that her? That is her. <laughs> <laughs> ah! 
Oh, <laughs> cute. I wonder was that romantic drop your bags and run moment organic or the producer's idea? I wanna do that one day, but knowing me, I'll be thinking about how dirty that airport floor is. <laughs> drop bags where? All I saw was her travel pillow hit the ground. So excited to come here. It's been like a dream come true. It's finally, it's, it's finally here. Right when Bilal and Shida hit the door to head to the car, it didn't take long for his material possessions to come up. I just want to just get to know him all over again, to be quite honest, and just get more acquainted with one another. I'm looking forward to see a lot of things. You know, he has been hiding from me, let's be real. So I'm looking forward to going home, seeing his house, seeing his car. Oh, Bilal's face says it all. I understand her excitement for wanting to see how he lives and all of that, but I think it's the way she said it. So I'm looking forward to going home, seeing his house, seeing his car. That makes it a bit of a red flag. And seeing his house is one thing, but to emphasize seeing his car, you can think it, but why say it? You're telling on yourself. Speaking of cars, before we get into Shada's reaction to Bilal's rental van, take a look at how she reacts when she thinks they're about to get into the Chevrolet that's parked next to the van. Right, here we are. You take this? Yeah. Did she get sad? Huh? I, I thought it was this one. Oh, you thought this? No. What car does she drive in Trinidad? That's what I want to know. She laughed at the Chevy. She was literally so relieved to know that that wasn't his car. But it didn't take her too long to start complaining about the van. But God, you didn't put all, you didn't put my things in all this trash? What's that? You didn't put my things in all this trash. What are you, my mom? Uh -huh. This is trash. You put my bag inside there like that? That's not trash. This is trash. I think I see a little rat or something. That is my toolbox. What are you talking about? This place looking like Sanford and Son. He was only trying to help you. For those who don't know, Sanford and Son is a classic TV show. And as you can see, the house is full of clutter. It is just day one of Bilal and Shida being together. And I can already see that this is about to be a recurring theme here. It's not what you say, let's say it all together, but it's how you say it. It's okay to be disappointed, but that's no excuse to be mean and nasty. Bilal has always been secretive. It sort of worried me. I was like, what is he hiding? What does he have to hide? But just the mere fact that he's flipping houses and buying property, I know that costs a lot of money. So I know that his finances has to be at a certain up there, and that is not the type of van I expect him to drive. I'm not sure what she truly meant by that, but it came off entitled. He's the one out here working hard and making the money, so what you think he should drive is irrelevant. And if we want to talk about real wealth here, there are a lot of wealthy people that drive average cars. They might have their luxury rides, but on a day-to-day -day basis, you can find them in a Toyota Camry. I've seen it. I don't want to get into my Trini behavior and start to behave like a Trini, you know, when we, we start to say bad things and we be wild. Yeah, that wouldn't be a good thing. But this is completely unacceptable. I love you, babe, but you're losing points. You kind of lost a little points with me. I'm a firm believer about appreciating what you have. Because here's the thing about life. Things happen all the time. You know, I know people who've had wealth and they lose it. And they have to go back to their humble beginnings. Like, let's say if something like that were to happen, like, was she the type of person to still be ride or die for you? Because we are just meeting Shida for the first time, I want to give her some grace. I'm hoping that as the show continues, we'll start to see more of her positive qualities. But as of right now, I'm not getting ride or die vibes, mainly because of the way she talks to him. But this is completely unacceptable. Think about it. If he was really down and out, 
what she's saying could break his spirit. And in a relationship, you need someone who's going to speak life into you during those moments. I was hoping that, you know, she would be a little like, oh, wow, like, this is your car? OK, you know, I didn't think that it would go the way that it went. Also, to be fair, I'm not making any excuses for rude behavior, but if Bilal is flexing on social media and showing off his material possessions as if that is where his worth lies, can he really get mad at her for valuing his material possessions too? We are home. Fast forward to when they get to the house. Shida the Shade Queen comes out full force. Oh, babe. Hmm? A home from the 1900s. <laughs> Must be an antique. It's called historic. Oh. Right. Hey. So this is obviously living room. This is where we watch TV at and stuff like that. Um, pray. Man, that's feeling. Yeah, I gotta get that done. It looks like it could collapse on us any moment. <laughs> I'm just gonna insert really quickly here. The house is a bit extreme. With all the work that needs to be done on it and how the ceiling is peeling can be concerning, especially if it wasn't something you were expecting. The truth is, in most situations, the way someone keeps up their living space can tell you a lot about them. Yeah. So I'm not gonna sit here and act like my mouth wouldn't have dropped like Shy's did. If I walked into that house knowing it was about to be mine for the foreseeable future. This place, is dilapidated. This place is not the place I want to be at. After Bilal gives her a tour of the house. This is where the magic happens. Right in here. OK. They sit down and have an honest conversation. I was not expecting this. Expecting this right here? Yeah. Is there any rocks in the kitchen? Do I look like a person who Well, has... the ceiling is falling. Right now, I don't even know who are you because you, you showed up in a pan and van. That's cool. I am not comfortable moving to a first world country like United States and having to live like if I'm in the 1900s. We can, you can do better. We can when, do better. When did you read in the Quran where it says you need to provide a mansion? I didn't ask for a mansion. OK, that's the point I'm making. Mm -hmm. There are some things that need to be fixed, yes, right? A lot However, of things that need to be fixed. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that need to be fixed with your attitude right now, too. Bilal goes on to say that he's hurt by the way Shida is reacting to the house because it's actually his family's home. If she came across the hey, like the home, I understand it's, it's a nice small house, it's comfortable, et cetera, but maybe we can grow and get a bigger something. Like, that's okay with me. But a lot of what she said was actually more hurtful in relation to like, I thought that, like, you would have been better than what you are right now. Meanwhile, she says the house does not reflect the man who she fell in love with. Nothing about this house says you. You know, this is a reality check for single ladies out there. Some of the men you're counting out might really have it all. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Believe what you see until you're given a reason to think differently. You want something to eat? Yeah, something that's from a clean bowl, yeah. Yeah, well, I can order something. I know you don't want to eat in my You have enough money for that? That was not nice. Wow, you put a camera in front of some people, and that still doesn't make them hold their tongue. I get it, she's disappointed, but she's showing her true character by how she's choosing to act on her disappointment. If I was Bilal and they make it through this, I don't know how I would feel about spending money on her in the future. <laughs> I would be hesitant. I understand she has standards, but come on, Shida. She has to make sure she doesn't block her blessings by being too superficial. Because if she's not careful, that's exactly what she's about to do. Oh, the food is here? Yeah, food is here. When Bilal came to Trinidad, he seemed like a pretty much put together type of guy. You know, he had Louis Vuitton luggage. He dressed really nice, dapper. So I was expecting the home to kind of suit how he looks. Shada goes on to say she feels deceived by Bilal and she tells him she feels like he's struggling, and that has her worried. But once Shada sees that her behavior has Bilal and his feelings, she softens up a bit, just a bit. And we might have to sell a couple of those suits, and I'm here to work with him, and so uh, we have a lot of work to do before we could even cross the bridge of getting married. 
I just don't go with the image that you carry. Yeah. And I, and you can't, you cannot fight me down for being shocked. What well, you keep saying, an image? What image is the image? Image that you carry, baby. Came to train now with your baggage, wearing expensive watches and belts. And now to come in, I mean, in this little humble abode, it just, it's not, how do you say it? It doesn't suit you. Well, at least she's being honest about how she feels. But it's wild because she has no clue that what she wants, he has. I definitely wouldn't want to marry somebody who just wants me for my money. I'd rather for 100% for sure want to marry somebody who wants me for what I am. Speaking of that, back to the question I asked you earlier. If you had to choose between true love that last, keywords that last, or financial wealth that last, what would your choice be? What really matters to you, money or love? I know, it's pretty obvious that I'm going to say true love. How would I look saying financial wealth after everything I said this episode? But don't get me wrong, I plan to be financially wealthy. As a matter of fact, I am financially wealthy. Claim it, yes. But while money is great, to love and be loved back is such an enriching feeling that money can't buy. The one who's got me inspired, keep on lifting, lifting me higher. Yes, y'all better listen to Teddy. A healthy love will motivate you to be your best, carry you through life's challenging moments, and make the beautiful ones even more beautiful. I know, I sound like a sap, but there are rich people who after they have their fun, they're miserable and lonely because they have no one to share their wealth with. On the other end, you have people who are genuinely in love and not rich, but happy. All right, I can't wait to hear your thoughts, but getting back to the couple who inspired this conversation, next week, Bilal is taking Shada to where he actually lives. Now I'm assuming he's going to tell her this was all a test. This is a test. We gotta eat lunch over at my mom's house. Would you still be with me if she doesn't like me? Uh, probably uh -huh. more likely not. We have been arguing nonstop. Is this the best time to meet his mom? When to meet my mother. Whew, I can't wait to see her reaction. By the way, I'm hopefully talking to these two soon, so if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I will pick a few. All right, 90 Day Fans fam, make sure you stick with ET because we are covering it all. I will see you next time.